It's over a thousand pages long. It contains a lot of bureaucratic information and it's pretty daunting to look at. You can see all that's left of the Mondasir is a pile of charred wood and twisted metal. Now fire investigators are still here at this hour combing through some of the debris. They're focusing on the middle part of the house here behind me as a possible point of origin. Storm or no storm, the Air Transport Association of America is expecting a two and a half percent drop in air travel nationwide this holiday season. Headline athletes will compete today as team USA marches toward what could be its most successful Olympic Games ever. The group had only been out of quarantine for about three days before this latest confinement and now family members who said last week they weren't worried about the situation say they're concerned. Shirley Fisher has lived on the Klamath River in California all her life. She's angry at the possibility of four dams on the river being removed that keep the water calm near her home. I think it's the most asinine thing I've ever heard. All of us up here, we're just sick about it. State and federal officials signed the Klamath Basin Restoration Agreement, or KBRA, in Salem on Thursday. To say hasta la vista to the dams. Yeah. <laughs> The $1.5 billion plan calls for dam removal, outlining water rights, and restoring the ecosystem. We're just so upset that nobody's come to talk to us. It's just shoved on us. Shirley Fisher's property line extends from the middle of the river all the way up to the highway. She's afraid if the dams are removed, all of this land will be covered by water, putting her home at risk for flooding. I'll sure have a mess. Shirley isn't the only river resident against the KBRA. In fact, all of these people showed up at her house on Friday to share their concerns. They say there are hundreds more just like them. It'll be years and years before everything is back to normal. And it never will be back to normal if they take the dams out. Years of research lay ahead before the federal government makes a final decision on restoring the river. That requires congressional approval. In Klamath River, California, Hillary Lake, Fox 26 News. This was the sky over Upper Tolman Creek Road Monday morning, the epicenter of a fast-moving fire made worse by strong winds that pushed flames toward homes as locals stood in shock. This house was immediately threatened. Crews scrambled to save it. The only ones home, three dogs and three llamas, all of them safe. But another house on the property went up in flames. The owners, this mother and daughter, were in Medford when the fire started. They came home to their worst fears. Residents who live further up the hill got out fast. We've got water going on all of the roofs. We've got TID going, hoping to keep the ground nice and wet. And we'll just pray when we get back that there'll be a house left. Be advised, folks, we're starting an evacuation. It's time to get off Tolman Creek. Police cleared out the area as a precaution in case the fire jumped from one side of the road to the other, a major threat to hundreds of homes. Residents packed up their belongings, hoping for the best. I'm worried about my son because he's in preschool, but just, I don't know. I'm mostly worried about my cats. The spectacle of the fire kept locals out further on down the street, as close as they could get to the action. We jumped over Tolman Creek, then we're in the whirler. Some homeowners stayed behind to protect their own property while crews fight on. They're already starting to tear it down. Stan Smith and his daughter Dana Tooley are looking at the charred remains of the inn. Huge part of our life. The Mondasir was destroyed by fire Monday morning. Their family owned the Southern Oregon landmark for 15 years. It was uh, quite, a, quite a place in those days. The house was built in 1910 for Conroe Fierro and his wife, Grace Andrews. By the time the Smith family bought it in 1965, it was a French restaurant that they turned into an internationally known dining destination. They sold it in 1979. My parents, who worked so hard, so hard here to make it nice. Since then, it had been bought and sold several more times, many with an eye toward restoring it. Now all that's left of the Tudor-style mansion is a pile of burned wood, twisted metal, and lots of questions. Police say they think the fire started somewhere in the middle section of the house. They say they have witness reports of flames being seen on the front porch area, which is right behind me, just after 4 o'clock this morning. The house was unoccupied, up for lease at the time of the fire, and investigators aren't ruling anything out. If we knew right away that this was a crime, we would treat it no differently than we are right now. We protect the evidence, protect the scene. For Dana and Stan, the Mondesir was more than a business. It's sad when we lose our history. While they examine what's left, they wonder if it will ever be brought back.
What started out as a small project to send a few care packages to troops in Afghanistan required an assembly line Tuesday night. I thought it would just be like our family giving us stuff and sending a couple boxes, but it turned into a thousand boxes. 14-year-old Bryce Thornton got the idea to send the troops care packages when he realized so many of them won't be home for the holidays. To make all of this happen, the community came together and donated thousands of pounds of food and other items and $16,000 in cash, which will be used to mail all of these boxes to Afghanistan. 1,000 troops in Kandahar will get the care packages, each box custom filled by hands in southern Oregon. The contents of no two boxes are exactly alike. There's going to be a box in just about every soldier's hands at that airbase. Each box also contains a handwritten thank you note from a child and a special message from state representative and Vietnam veteran Sal Esquivel. This tells our troops that we're thinking of. Them. For some, helping pack these boxes is a way to remember the soldiers who are so far away. I believe that the troops uh, deserve a good thank you for uh, being there to save our country, and they deserve a good Merry Christmas. For others, packing a box is more personal. My brother is on his second tour in Iraq, so this is extra special. It's a community coming together to remember loved ones and unknown soldiers during the holidays because Bryce Thornton wanted to make a difference for the troops. In Eagle Point, Hillary Lake, NBC5 News.